you know, to find, you know, three or four young people who throw their surfboards in the back of the car or on the roof and just head off up the coast looking for waves and to have that feeling of uncrowded, perfect surf, that great feeling of relaxation afterwards, sunset, a few beers and whatever and try and hook into a party, try and find a party to get into. Really that's what, that's what the search is all about. Surfing can mean free skiing, board sailing, wakeboarding, skateboarding, street surfing. So surfing really encompasses all of those things. And it's the same spirit that lives within all of those people that drives them to, to those activities. I guess the search came first. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say, it's hard to pull the two apart, but... Um we had in mind that lifestyle and that surfing as much as we could first and that's why we created the company. I mean we did what we did, we lived that sort of life, we made a few surfboards to help ourselves and, and then our mates surf a bit better and um, that's how the company was born really. The search really uh, was the driving force that led to the creation of Rip Girl. I'd uh, actually been the beach cleaner down at Torquay for a while and um, then gravitated to teaching you somehow, so it was just a, a way to get out of that and do something I love. At the time we had one thing in mind and that was to hang out in Torquay or other similar places around Australia or other parts of the world for that matter and just surf, pursue this surfing lifestyle, surf as much as we could and get sort of involved or enmeshed in whatever other parts of the lifestyle that were available. Well certainly 20 or 30 years ago we had no expectation that, it would, that the industry or this company would be the size that it is today. Fundamentally it's still the same place. I guess the biggest high is probably achieving the lifestyle that we set out to do in the, in the beginning. If I had to name the one thing that, that, uh, that I've got out of working here it'd be the people. Over a thousand uh, crew working in the Rip Curl entities around the world today. Uh, so it's terrific to have all those join us. And a lot of our customers, a lot of the customers have joined us too. And you learn a lot from that. We certainly get satisfaction in, in seeing that we've uh, made a real bond with those people and been able to provide for their needs. Sure, it's work, but it's, it's also part of, part of your life. It's, it's really what you do. kind of how we, we lived and grew up, but I, I guess it was only about 10 years ago that we, we happened to coin a phrase for it called the search, and this, the, the phrase the search, or the word the search, tries to sum up that whole, that whole feeling of, of just getting away. You'll get out of your own backyard and you adventure around the planet, and then you find other aspects of, of lifestyle and culture. Any person can define it in their own way. I would say every search is different. It's, it's not the same for everybody. But for all people, it's that aspect of freedom, looking for what's around the corner, and for us here, it's looking for that next perfect wave. I think it's a fundamental driving force that's sort of driven Rip Curl. Our aim, our vision is to be the ultimate surfing company in, in all respects. Every product we make, everything we do. We are always striving for something better and if we're not, our competitors are or 
better still, people within the company, some of the crews, some of the younger people are striving for some, something better. So it, it's pretty hard to be uh, satisfied. It's a drag when you've got something that doesn't work right. If you're surfing or skiing somewhere, or snowboarding or windsurfing, it's a drag to have something that's, that's annoying. So it's a, a competitive drive to make sure that we and other people have stuff that really works. When we see something with our name on it that's not good enough, that's really annoying and something we work hard to try to eliminate. Sometimes I'll figure that a particular person doing a, a, a job should have thought it through better rather than asking me about it and me trying to figure it out. Having to tell people how to do things or when to do things when they should be able to figure it out for themselves and have taken responsibility and ownership of that. Pisses you off. Another one is when we're beaten into the marketplace by a competitor. When a, a new need or a new niche has arisen, a new taste, and we haven't identified it. One of those happened two or three years ago and that really pissed me off. We don't want to blame anybody for um, making errors. We'd like them to uh, take on board the responsibility and make the decisions. It really did spur us on to try harder when we got beaten a couple of years ago on, on one small thing and uh, it was that spurring on that led to the creation of the Elasto wetsuit which is probably the biggest single advance we've made in wetsuit technology. We certainly like the stars but we need people that you know, can work effectively in the back rooms and at all levels of our organisation. People who are adaptable, able to change, and people who are going to cope with the rapid change that I think is going to occur over the next three to five years. For the first uh, 10 or 15 years of Rip Curl, we really just thought about products. We bumbled along. We didn't really know how to run a business, although I guess we did in some fashion, but we just tried to make the best stuff. Things like that are more important to us than the money. The money comes, if it comes, it comes as a, a byproduct. For a two or three year period we focused on, you know, our sales numbers and our profit numbers and so on and we had a couple of outside advisors involved with us in monthly meetings and um, we nearly went broke. The fundamentals we've been talking about here are much more important to us than those numbers. The number chase, well certainly doesn't work for Rip Curl, it might work for others. Well, I think first and foremost, we are the customer. Either all or a real core of the crew here are the customer. We listen to the customers. So we surf and we ride snowboards and we go free skiing. We listen to our retail customers. Talk to a lot of surfers and observe a lot of surfers. That is the core. We actually conduct from time to time formal research. We'd also like to get the feedback from our team members. And that's how we learn how to make the right products, the right stuff for them. The company now has a lot of people and the way in which uh, Claw and myself and then some of the other people closely associated with us saw the way we were heading, saw the right way to do things for this particular company. It gets more and more difficult to explain this verbally to increasingly large numbers of people. To outline a little of the history of Rip Curl, but more importantly, the set of values on which the company is founded. The manual will be able to be used by everybody in the company, particularly people trying to make decisions in their day-to-day -day activities, they'll be able to refer to the manual to help them make a decision. And the idea of that is to have all of our crew, that's all of the people that work in Rip Curl companies around the world, to work together on the same set of principles. It's kind of an unwritten rule that uh, if the waves are real good and you manage your work properly, you can take a break and go surfing. If the surf happens to be good at 11 o'clock in the morning, they'll have a surf then and make sure the work's done later. Some other people are in roles here where it's 
you know, they're in a, a different sort of position and they're not able to drop tools whenever they might happen to feel like it and um, head off, but there's always before and after work and lunchtime. Things are certainly more casual. It's less regimented. I'm sure a lot of the people work very hard. They, they work long and hard, but in a slightly less structured environment and they, they feel some of that casual spirit, they feel some fun um, and I certainly think that they feel that they're part of surfing working here. The purpose and values of a company often reflect the leaders of a company and I think that to some degree has happened here and it's basically a case of put yourself in the other person's shoes. When we as a company first got into the ski industry they seemed to do things differently there and the salesman selling ski wear would offer one retailer a certain discount and then another retailer would get a different discount. We got feedback from the ski retailers but that what they liked about Rip Girl and the surf industry was the fact that it was credible. Integrity and fairness is, is really the heart and soul of our terms of trade and the relationship that we have with our retailers. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you is, is not a bad way to, to behave and it, it comes through all aspects of the company and life. We're constantly trying to make better products and make technological breakthroughs, innovative new stuff that works better. It's not just fun, that work, actually works better. Well, that's how we deliver the ultimate search life, whether it be in the mountains or in the oceans. A continual striving to make better stuff for those people on the search. We need the whole of the crew, the whole of the team, being part of that env environment and supporting the environment where those technological breakthroughs can be made. So we think everyone's part of it. In France, the people at Ripkill get together there every so often and have a major beach cleanup, which I think is just a great idea. Recently, uh, an environment, environmental committee started up here and uh, I'll certainly be encouraging that. I didn't initiate it, but um, I was glad that it happened. As a company, we're, you know, we're a part of the local community. We sponsor the local football club. We sponsor the local school. I mean, we all ski and snowboard in the mountains, surf in the ocean. So it really is looking after ourselves if we try to look after that, that part of the environment. Um, I think that it's an area where moving into the future, Rip Curl could focus on even a little bit more strongly.